This is a rose hit, and I am the roaming rose researcher on the rose hip road trip. I have a rose between my hips, lowers on my lips, and I am hip to the power of plants. Each day, I chant to invoke their spirits. Can you hear it? This is a rose hit, and I am the roaming rogue researcher. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Hillary Booker, the roaming rogue researcher, and this is the rose hip road trip. This is real live research, and I am really excited to be here with you today, so don't forget to put your thinking caps on, kids, because it's going to be a wild ride. This is one of the only episodes you'll hear me alone because it's way more fun to share my conversations with other people. And I already have so many to share with you. This is really a multicast. It's multimedia, mixed media, because I have video, audio, pictures, writing, art, poetry, food, and so much more. So be sure to check out the videos on YouTube at the Institute for Earth-Based Living and find me on Facebook at Rosehip Road Trip and Institute for Earth-Based Living and follow me on Instagram. The handles there are Rosehip Road Trip and Institute for Earth-Based Living. If you follow the Institute for Earth-Based Living on Facebook and Instagram, you can catch morning memos every single day for intuitive messages for your growth and your life. And no doubt, intuitive messages are going to be flying all over the Rosehip Road Trip, so stay tuned. I wanted to do this introductory episode so that I could tell you about what the Rosehip Road Trip actually is, how it came about, why I'm doing it, and what you can expect to hear in each episode. Most episodes will be about individual people or places and communities, which is the point. But I wanted to make sure that you also know the purpose it's meant to serve as a whole and why each of these individual stories is important to something larger. One of the core values of the Institute for Earth-Based Living is to honor specific experiences and illuminate how specific experiences and individual stories offer insight into larger phenomena in the world and the human experience. The purpose of the Rosehip Road Trip is to explore how people in various regions of the United States use earth-based food, medicine, and spiritual practices to find healing, liberation, and restoration. You may be asking, what does she mean by earth-based? Earth-based and earth-based living means moving through the world with a clear understanding that your body is a habitat for your spirit and the earth is the habitat for your body. As humans, we have consciousness, we can make choices, and earth-based living means that one chooses a life and daily practices that respect and work in conjunction with ecological processes, whether they're in your body or in the environment surrounding you. It means making choices that facilitate or enhance the natural cycles of the body you're in and the body you're on planet Earth. The term ecological restoration usually refers to how humans can restore ecosystems or what we can do to bring an ecosystem back into balance. Earth-based restoration, which is what I call my own healing practice, is about how we return to our own ecological identities and allow the Earth to restore us. As we move into and through our own natural cycles and processes, we give our bodies and the earth the time and space they need to restore themselves and one another. So we can't restore an outer ecosystem without restoring an inner ecosystem. And we can't restore an inner ecosystem without restoring the outer ecosystem, which is true not only of physical ecosystems, but also social, political, economic, cultural, and spiritual eco ecosystems. The number one principle of earth-based living is that everything is connected. 
but I still keep the definition of earth-based fairly open because the purpose of the ROSEP road trip is not to spend time debating about what is or isn't an earth-based practice. Because honoring different experiences means acknowledging that we all have different bodies and that the earth and its cycles manifest in different ways, in different environments, and in different types of environments. The purpose of the Rose Hip Road Trip is to explore how people who engage in earth-based practices define what that means to and for them and their communities. Each person I've interviewed has offered their own definition of what earth-based is, and I know that definition will continue to evolve as the work continues. The emphasis of the Rose Hip Road Trip is on practices and narratives that tend to be unrepresented, underrepresented, and misrepresented in conventional narratives of health and the environment in research and in culture, especially in the media. I say unrepresented, underrepresented, and misrepresented narratives and practices, not communities and people, purposely. Because I find that as people seek to increase diversity in various spaces, they look for people with different kinds of bodies, looks, skin colors, genders, types of abilities, etc. But I also wonder if it's taken into account as we're creating this quote-unquote diversity, whether or not these people who look different also think differently. And if they do, are they allowed to express it at work, at school, in their houses of worship? in various public spaces that they inhabit? Do these people think differently? Or am I staring at a lineup of people who all look different and have different kinds of names, but are expected to think in the same way in order to maintain their social and professional positions? I've actually been to conferences and presentations where people very openly will put a picture of the members of their organization up on a screen and say things like, look how diverse we are, if it's a space that's traditionally white, or look how many women are involved, if it's a space that tends to be male-dominated. But then, when you speak with the people involved, it's very clear that the overall mindset is mostly the same, whether it's conscious or unconscious. And the Rose Hip Road Trip is about conscious authenticity in one's life and practice. Another core tenet of the Institute for Earth-Based Living is to honor and engage multiple languages, dialects, knowledge systems, genres, cultures, and forms of expression. Each form of expression, each language, and each knowledge system carries with it an expression that can't be conveyed in any other way. And whenever a particular expression or language or knowledge system is deleted or eliminated or ignored in an overall understanding of the world, there's a piece of our understanding that's missing. When I decided to pursue advanced education, I had a very clear mission, which was to support not only people and communities that are often unrepresented, underrepresented and misrepresented, but to support the legitimacy of narratives, languages, forms of knowledge, and forms of expression that come from those communities because a truly equitable society respects all knowledge and all knowledge systems as indelibly linked to the people that compose it. This means that people can only be fully respected if the energies and the systems from which they originate are also respected, whether they choose to maintain those systems or not. It means that people get to choose whether or not they maintain their origins and that they definitely have the option of knowing what their origin is in the first place. There are many types of knowledge, there are many types of education, there are many types of thinking, and a truly equitable society offers more than equal opportunity to achieve the conventional indicators for privilege, power, and success, 
I'm going to say that again. A truly equitable society offers more than equal opportunity to achieve the conventional indicators for privilege, power, and success. It offers equal opportunity to and equal respect for all forms of knowledge and all forms of expression. This means that everyone gets to determine their own dreams and that making one's dreams come true can happen in a multitude of ways. Self-determination means that everyone has equal opportunity to determine the outcomes of their lives and how they're going to get there. Equal opportunity has to be more than distributing privilege more equally among people who look different as long as they are willing to conform to a certain way of being. Because when you have to conform to a certain way of being to attain privilege, it means that equity requires people to repress who they are and where they come from, to diminish important knowledge and pieces of their identity. It means to attain privilege, people have to take on different forms of identity, whether they want to or not. So equal opportunity to privilege ends up homogenizing society and homogenizing people rather than diversifying society and offering more opportunities for people to share their inner diversity and their inner fluidity. I am not a conspiracy theorist and I'm not willing to say that people are out there purposefully engineering a reality in which some people are going to receive more than others. But what I will say is that if we want a different reality, we need to create it. Because the fact of the matter is that we're living in a world where some people are privileged more than others. And a big part of the point of the Rosehip Road Trip is to illuminate how people are creating new realities while creating a new reality itself. Because if you are not creating the reality you want, someone else is going to create your reality for you. The greatest forms of oppression are the things that distract you from your creative capacity on this planet. Whatever that might look like for you, and it looks an infinite number of ways. It looks different for every single human being. We as a human species right now have some pretty serious challenges on our hands. And the solutions that are going to change the world are going to come from a synthesis of creation that results from diverse perspectives. Not from inviting people from diverse communities to sit at the table as long as they're willing to think a certain way, act a certain way, talk a certain way, worship a certain way, and maintain the dominating paradigms. We need to have rooms full of people, cities full of people, a world full of people to be people who don't just have all different bodies, but we all have to have different minds, regardless of what we look like. Ultimately, the goal of the Rosehip Road Trip is to help heal the collective imagination and expand what we believe is possible by sharing different kinds of stories in different kinds of ways and by looking at the world from lots of different perspectives and in particular perspectives that aren't shared a whole lot. The Rosehip Road Trip is about liberation, healing, restoration, and honoring all of the different ways that people find these things for themselves and their communities through earth-based practices. My experience in my own life and in my research is that if you focus on the problem, you keep getting more of the problem. You keep learning more and more about the problem. You keep being able to describe the problem better. And I understand the perspective that if you come to know the problem really well, then you can focus on potential solutions that often need to be state-sanctioned or university-sanctioned or some other kind of official institution-sanctioned. But the Rosehip Road Trip is about people who have been called to a different path. Because I have been called to a different path. And what you seek is what you are. 
I think I've known I was called to a different path since I was a very young girl living in the woods in rural Virginia, playing with animals and flowers and trees and making pinch pots from red clay and generally making whatever I could possibly imagine. And most importantly, getting very dirty all the time. My path is to explore how people heal and liberate themselves in their own ways, no matter what, regardless of who legitimizes or delegitimizes what they do or how they go about it. The legitimacy of the practices enacted by the people on the road trip is proven by their very lives, by their very being. By focusing on how people find health, healing, decolonization, and liberation for themselves and their communities, I just keep finding more people who are finding health, healing, decolonization, and liberation for themselves and their communities, not instead of problems, but despite them. Just like any other pursuit, what you find as a researcher is what you're looking for. Research data is based on observations that answer questions asked by people with certain sets of beliefs. Those beliefs shape the questions they ask. Those beliefs shape what the person is looking for and what they have the capacity to see. What makes research valuable is the process itself. But ultimately, research is scientific divination. What you find is a direct result of the questions you ask, and the questions you ask are a direct result of who you are, how you see the world, and what you believe is possible. Equally important, my experience is that one can explore problems without ever discussing solutions or potential solutions. But you can't talk with people about their healing and liberation without also hearing, hearing about what they're healing and liberating themselves from. This project is about more than justice. This is about liberation. The Rose Hip Road Trip is a freedom project, a restoration ride. I also wanted to share what qualifies me to do this work. The professional in me, the academic in me, felt like that was an important question. And at first, I was going to read you a list of my degrees and the job experience I have. But to be honest with you, I initially started the Rose Hip Road Trip because I wasn't getting the jobs I was applying for after I finished my PhD. But I knew I was called to continue my work no matter what. But since this is my own project, I can be really, really honest, and I can do it exactly how I want to do it, which is great. What qualifies me to do this work has nothing to do with the degrees I hold. I am proud of those degrees. I worked really, really hard for my degrees, professionally and personally, and they all taught me a whole lot. But what qualifies me to do this project is not what I am. It's who I am. What I have in common with the people who have been and will be a part of this project is my own commitment to doing my work because it's my own form of healing for myself and I hope for lots of other people who are both participants in and observers of this project. I'm qualified to do this work because of my ability to see myself in every single human being I encounter. What qualifies me to do this project is that I never ask a question that I'm not prepared to answer myself and that I haven't already answered myself. I know that I'm called to do this project because there's a piece of my own story in every single person I interview. Initially, I was going to tell you about who I am besides a roaming rogue researcher with a rose between her hips, but my willingness to be a roaming rogue researcher is exactly what qualifies me to do this particular project. 
What qualifies me to do this project is not that I'm an expert in liberation theories, but my deep commitment to embodying those theories every single day and my deep commitment to the liberation of this entire planet as a single ecological being. It's not my master's degree in peace studies from Trinity College Dublin, but my deep commitment to working to find my own peace every single day and to help other people do the same. It's not my PhD in environmental studies, but the fact that I came out of the womb understanding my identity as an ecological being and have never forgotten that I emerge from the earth, that I am made from earth, and that I am the earth. It's not my knowledge of political and social revolutions that qualifies me to do this research, but my identity as a walking revolution. I'm qualified to do this work because I don't see it as separate from me and my life. I'm not reporting about those people over there doing those things that they do. The interviews I feel are important expressions of my own life, my own calling, and my own way of being, even though it's not even remotely about me. And I know that it's being guided by something greater than I am, and I've designed this project with enough space so that it can be a vehicle for something much larger to occur. And as the interviews continue and the project progresses, it becomes more and more obvious that something larger is indeed occurring. I also want to demystify the process of research and at the same time demonstrate that as scientific divination, it can be mystical. And honestly, I don't have to do anything to show that it can be mystical. Because once you hear and see these interviews, you will see and hear all the random mystical shit that keeps happening. In the grand tradition of Hillary Booker, exactly a year ago on Memorial Day weekend during a trip to Vermont with one of my closest friends, since I didn't get any of the jobs that I hoped would allow me to continue the work I started with my doctoral dissertation, I thought, I think I'll just create a small project to demonstrate what I've been proposing so that people can see what I'm talking about. And once people can see what I've done, they'll totally want to hire me. And because it's me, small project meant interviewing 150 people in five regions across the country. In the meantime, as is true with everything, research costs money, and I love money. So I ended up creating the institute I'd been dreaming up for a few years and that I didn't think I was going to create for at least 10 years. And I've spent the last year learning a whole lot about business and learning how to love business and money so that I could build one of my very own so that I could ensure that my research will always be funded and that these stories and this knowledge will always be preserved and protected because that's what I've been asked to do. The Rosip Road Trip is not only about stories. It is a story in and of itself. And my intention is to allow the story of the Rosip Road Trip to unfold through the stories on the Rosip Road Trip. One of the primary themes that emerged in my doctoral research about journeys of healing and consciousness in the Bahamas was that each piece of the journey leads you to the next piece. You learn in one phase or moment of life what you need to carry you to the next phase, the next moment. I designed this research project very much like I designed my doctoral research. The people I interview choose the people I interview. And because of that, each interview adds a new piece to the story. But you don't know what the whole story is until you get to the end. And neither do I. And that's what makes the journey worthwhile. The Rosehip Road Trip is very fluid. The interviewees choose one another, so it's always just as much of a surprise for me as it is for you. The first set of interviews is from the Mid-Atlantic region, 
which I define as Southern New York to Washington, D.C. These will be the first interviews I share with you. While I'm sharing those interviews, I'll be conducting others all summer long throughout the Deep South, which I define as Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. And I can't wait. I'm so excited. If you're interested in following my travel adventures and want to hear about and see all of the nitty gritty details, you can visit www.instituteforearthbasedliving.com forward slash rosehip road trip. You can follow me on Instagram at rosehip road trip and on Facebook at, you guessed it, rosehip road trip. If you have questions about the research or episodes, please don't hesitate to contact me on those venues or via email at hillary at instituteforearthbasedliving.com. That's Hillary with one L, H-I-L-A-R-Y, at instituteforearthbasedliving.com. If you want me to come speak to your organization or school, please email me or send me an email through my website. Thank you so much for listening. It's going to be a wonderful, wondrous, wild ride, and I'm so happy to have you along for the ride with me. Have a great day. This is a rose hit, and I am the roaming rogue researcher on the rose hip road trip. I have goddesses in my hips, I go to herbs to get my tips, and my food even makes fairies do flips. This is a rose hip, and I am the roaming rogue researcher on the rose hip road trip. I let the wind determine my cliff, I stay away from air.